Hello, folks. Dustin Zarni here, Democratic Elections Commissioner of Onondaga County. Welcome to Commissioner in a Car, and this is my explainer for national party conventions and what they are. Um, we are in the middle on uh, today, on Tuesday, uh, the, uh, the, the 16th. We are in the middle of the Republican National Convention. Um, and I, I thought this commissioner in a car would be a good time to explain a few things that are going on with national conventions, including what might be a virtual roll call being planned for the Democratic National Convention and why that's happening later in August. Um, obviously, this is my first podcast since the horrendous shooting, the tragedy that happened on Saturday uh, at the Donald Trump rally in Pennsylvania. And I posted a lot about it on Facebook and Twitter. And I just want to say this right now. Uh, political violence has no place in our society. Um, it takes the power away from regular people who are going to the ballot box to decide who's going to lead our nation. And whoever those people decide are the people are, is the person who should lead us forward. Not the whims of a madman with a gun. There was a lot of horrible um, uh, speculation about this. Um, it turns out right now, the information that that is out there as of right now, three or four days after this shooting, is that we don't know the motivations behind the shooter. The shooter seemed to be a registered Republican from a conservative family. His uh, his friends and family, uh, you know, call him a conservative, uh, that he had conservative values, that he was likely uh, a fan of Donald Trump. Um, but why did he try to shoot him? Um, that That's, you know, in situations like this, a lot of times people with mental deficiencies um, try to get fame, fortune, or even death by cop. We just don't know what the motivations are. And it was disgusting that J.D. Vance and a few others uh, came out in the immediate aftermath and blamed Democrats for the shooting um, without knowing anything about who the shooter was, whether there was a second shooter. And the real tragedy here is an innocent person lost his life, a hero who shielded his family from bullets. And he was a volunteer firefighter. Uh, I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but uh, his family um, was there with him. He was a Donald Trump fan, and he uh, took these stray bullets because he was shielding his family, and that's a hero. And that's where our immediate thoughts should have been and should still be. Um, but the business of politics continues. And as uh, I'll leave the law to the law enforcement to decide how this happened, why it happened, what uh, Secret Service deficiencies might have been there, and and then move forward. Thankfully, and I do say thankfully, Donald Trump uh, was not hit in a major substantial way, apparently. He had, he had his ear grazed by a bullet, which is uncomfortably close. But as you know, I'm no fan of Donald Trump. But he should be beaten at the ballot box, not in any other way. And uh, if we can't beat him at the ballot box, then he deserves to be president, even though I am very scared of his policies and what he will do to our country. So that's the end of that. But the business of politics does go on. And uh, the National Convention started for the Republicans yesterday. It started with the announcement of... Uh, uh, J.D. Vance as uh, the senator from Ohio as Donald Trump's running mate and also their roll call vote that uh, nominated Donald Trump at, to be the next uh, Republican nominee uh, for uh, president. Now, I want to, to talk about the roles of national conventions because there's been a lot of talk about uh, the effort by some to have Joe Biden step down from the national ticket on the Democratic side. Uh, I've made my position on that pretty clear. Uh, I, for something like that to happen, we would need un, convi convincing tr uh, 
proof that Mr. Biden could not win and that the replacements would have a better shot. I don't believe that has come out there, but I also believe we have some time to figure that out. Uh, we have until August 1st, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, because there looks like there's going to be a virtual roll call of the Democratic National Convention. And we'll get into that in a second. And why that's the case. And why some of the misfeeds on the Twitter and misrepresentations is not the case. Um, but we in New York elect delegates when we have our primary. We had our primary back on June uh, for, for president in April. Um, and we elected not only the name of the the president but to your the, the candidate but the delegates that go along with them and those delegates are pledged to vote for the winner of the uh popular vote in the congressional district that uh that held that primary um and uh it is also prorated it's not just the winner it's it's it, there's like in our New York 22, the uh, congressional district had six different delegates, uh, I believe. Um, and uh, if anybody had won enough votes to get one delegate coming out of the congressional district, their delegate, you know, would, would, would vote. And then the five other delegates would vote for Joe Biden. So it's prorated. Um, and those delegates go to the national convention, which is happening now for the Republicans and happening uh, later in August for the Democrats. So those delegates go and have a roll call vote. The Democratic National Convention has actually um, gone undergone some changes to actually remove some power from unelected delegates. Uh, gone are the super delegates that used to be there. And um, the unelected delegates are no longer there. So, and on the first round of the ballot, the delegates are bound by the rules of the party to cast their votes for the people that they represent that won the primary or won enough, won enough to put them on as a delegate uh, that they are pledged to in the first round. Those are the rules right now. And uh, I don't believe those rules can be changed at this point. Those are the rules that were going into this race. You can't change um, the race uh to, uh, uh, you know, in the middle of it. Uh, so the calls to change the rules on that, I think, are hopeless and, uh, and un unhelpful. So the question is, will Joe Biden, and I've always said this, that it's only Joe Biden's decision about whether to go forward. The primary has already happened. Uh, nobody challenged him. And... Uh, as a result of that, uh, there are no delegates. There is no delegate split. The, he has the overwhelming amount of delegates um, going into the uh, the national convention. And if he if that roll call vote happens, and then he will be elected and he will be the nominee of the Democratic Party. But he's not until then, and that's what's the important roles of national conventions. So in New York, after the national convention is done. A certification will be given to the New York State Board of Elections that will certify that this person is on the ballot. And we at the Board of Elections around Onondaga, uh, in Onondaga County and all over the state, we really can't start printing ballots until that time period. Because until that certification happens and we get notification of it by the, the state board. Um, so the Democratic National Convention... You know, the Republican National Convention is going to wrap up this week. Uh, J.D. Vance and Donald Trump will be certified and their names will be uh, given to New York and they will be on the ballot. By the way, uh, it, it's important to note that, you know, one of the reasons this is happening is because of the vice presidential candidate. The vice presidential candidate is not on the ballot during the primary only the the main name. So you have to have this national convention to get the name of the vice presidential candidate who will run with the president and be on a single ticket together in the fall. Now, the Republicans are having their convention. Now they're going to be done with. The Democrats are having theirs in August, and there's really no reason on that. Usually, uh, the incumbent party usually has their, their, uh, 
their nomination later and the challenging party has their nomination in July and the incumbent party has it in August. I will say though, the Democrats chose a pretty late date this time around um, and it did go in the face of several different states' laws. Uh, certain states say that the certificate that comes from the National Convention have to be in uh, to their Secretary of State by a certain date for, the, for their candidate to go on the ballot. And that's where that certification comes in. It can't come in until a vote has happened of the delegates. And in Ohio, um, August 7th is that date. Now, the Democratic National Convention doesn't happen until August 22nd. So there was and may still be a risk that if we wait until August 22nd, Joe Biden will not be on the ballot in Ohio or whoever the nominee is will not be on the ballot in Ohio. And so several weeks ago, well before the debate, the Democratic National Convention started talking about ways to have a virtual roll call to meet that August 7th date. Now, some will say, well, gee, Ohio has changed their law now, so there's no reason to hold this virtual debate. And the only reason they're holding the virtual debate is to lock in Biden as the choice of the party. Well, Biden's going to be the choice of the party unless Biden decides between now and whatever the virtual world call is that he doesn't want to be. Um, and because of the rules of the convention, because of the delegates he won, and even because of the people he put on, they're not going to buck him. They're going to vote for him. Uh, so this whole conspiracy theory that this virtual roll call that is being planned in the early August is some kind of uh, conspiracy is just stupid. Um, it was being planned well before all summer long um, because of this August 7th. Now, Ohio did pass a law changing that August 7th uh, deadline. But the effectiveness of that law, when you pass a bill, it has an effective date. And the effective date of that law is September 1st, 2024. So that means it doesn't go into effect until September. Well, the August 7th deadline and the August primary for the Democratic National Committee, uh, they are uh, after or before this September 1st deadline. Some are wondering, and I think they might have right, that there might be some shenanigans planned here. Especially now that J.D. Vance is the nominee, and he is the senator from Ohio, that if this virtual roll call didn't happen for the purposes of putting on the Ohio ballot, um, the uh, that Ohio would take Joe Biden off the ballot. And so I think that the DNC holding this virtual roll call had very little to do with locking in Biden and a lot to do with following with this August 7th date. Will it help Joe Biden to be the nominee? Well, again, I, I believe he's going to be the nominee. I don't, unless he decides he doesn't want to. Um, I, I, I think it will end the speculation, but I, uh, I don't know if it's going to help him any. I mean, the, the rules are going to be the rules on August 1st as well as August 22nd. Nothing's going to change in between that time period. Um, that couldn't also change after August 1st and only, you know, put the Ohio uh, portion of the ballot um, at, at risk. But why is Ohio important? Many people are going to say, well, uh, the Electoral College, uh, uh, you know, Ohio doesn't really factor in to the Electoral College. For the Democrats, it's been a Republican state for a long time, although Obama won Ohio twice, but it's been a Republican state for the last... Uh, uh, two election cycles and getting worse and we've uh, lost uh, senator races there and governor's races and all of that. And I get that. Uh, but there's another reason why you need to have Joe Biden on the ballot or the Democratic nominee for president on the ballot is that's because the Senate race. Sherrod Brown is running. He is a sitting Democratic senator and if you don't have a presidential race on the ballot, an absence of one could lead to voter suppression where people just don't come out to vote, which could hurt Sherrod Brown. Um, especially Democrats would not come out to vote because there's no Democratic candidate on the ballot. Um, Sherrod Brown is in the fight of his life to, to keep that Senate seat and control of the Senate runs through Ohio. Uh, and if Democrats are going to hold on to control, 
then uh, a Democratic nominee needs to be on the ballot, even if they're losing in Ohio, because it brings more people out to vote. Uh, and, or and at the very least, it doesn't keep people home who would go out. So that that is my quick and dirty explanator about why this discussed virtual roll call for the DNC might happen and why national conventions are important and what happens that will put people on the ballot. I think a lot of people just assume that all these people are on the ballot already. That is not the case. The certification comes after national convention. That's when we get the name of the vice president and that's when uh, the ballots can start being printed. So they're very important and uh, that virtual roll call that might happen, uh, there's reasons for it. Um, and a legis- legitimate reasons and reasons that uh, originated well before uh, the questions about Joe Biden's candidacy after that first debate um, came about. I don't believe that Joe Biden will resign uh, his candidacy. He's been very clear he's not. It's his decision. Uh, I believe that Kamala Harris would be the nominee if he if he doesn't. Um, there is some polling, very little polling, that indicates she might have a better shot. I think right now most of the people that are, are saying that are going off vibes. And that's okay. Because political science is about vibes. <laughs> it's The polling is unsure. It's unclear. And though there is consistent polling right now that shows a small lead for Donald Trump nationally and a slightly bigger lead in the battleground states for Donald Trump. There, The consistent polling also is within the margin of error. And it's also July. Uh, so ask President Dukakis, ask President uh, um, Mitt Romney, ask President uh, uh, you know uh, a million other people, ask them you know how what their polling was like in July. They didn't. They didn't uh, survive to be the, the president. So Joe Biden, you can't say he's up. He's at best tied, probably down a little bit. But there's a lot of undecided and a lot of um, time to go. The people have voted for Joe Biden in the primary. There, were, some will argue he was the only choice. There were other candidates on there, but not viable candidates. However. That's part of the strength of a candidacy as well, is to clear the field and make sure that there are no other candidates because of the the strength. And an incumbent president does have strength, even Joe Biden, even right now. Um, The fact that this is a very close race um, is uh, indicative of that, despite some of the approval ratings of both candidates. I will not speculate on what will happen after the shooting and whether that will affect polls in any way or manner. That's gross. And I won't do it. I just won't. Uh, We'll see what the polls do. We'll probably see some Republican bump after the convention. We've always seen that. Al Gore had a huge bump after his Democratic convention. He ended up losing to George W. Bush. So um, we'll see if that means anything. Um, And unfortunately, we just won't know who wins this election until November. That's what the campaigns are for. Uh, So that's my explainer of the national conventions. Um, and that's my commissioner in car for this week. Uh, this week, actually, starting tomorrow, I'll actually be in Minneapolis. I'm at a convention for the Partnership for Large Election Jurisdictions. So I might do, like, you know, some updates from there, uh, like I, I like to do, a, a quick reel or something from there, a TikTok, uh, talking about uh, what we're learning there. It's a great uh Group. I went there last year to California to there. Um, very lucky. This is not on the county dime. I do not. Uh, the the organization itself has flown us out, um, and uh, because it is, uh, uh, the, we, we are we are doing it as nonpartisans. Our Democrats and Republicans there, um, and uh, we're there to just learn about the best practices for election administration. And I think it's a, a great group. Uh, to talk to. Uh, I'm really uh, looking forward to that for the next few days. I will have a Zoom with Zarni drop on Friday with Tom Keck. We um, we uh, recorded it last night. Uh, it's a great uh, Zoom with Zarni. It happens with Tom. We go on for about an hour. Uh, it's a great uh, um, 
uh, podcast, so I, I can't wait to launch that for you. This weekend, I'll do a weekly wonk, uh, finishing up my look back at the primary election. Uh, I had the, the early voting and uh, alternative voting this last weekend. Next weekend will be election day and overall turnout. Um, and then finally, uh, you know, back on the schedule, trying to get, uh, you know, three things of content every week until the general election. Go to DustinZarney.com. You can subscribe, like, uh, and, uh, and get all kinds of no- email notifications for news and content updates. Uh, I, I, it's always free and it's, I pay for it all myself. Um, it's part of my, uh, education outreach for Onondaga County. So check it out. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. And look, the sun's coming out. It's great. <laughs> Bye-bye.